God has put a huge burden on our hearts for transformation. Shortly after we moved here, we could sense the level of, of darkness and just oppression and, um, and, and dysfunction that was happening in this community. And to be honest, we, we didn't want to stay. <laughs> we actually begged the Lord to let us leave. But he said, no, you're going to stay. And you're going to be the light in the darkness. And I'm going to teach you what I want you to accomplish here. Shortly after that, uh, I would say right between 99 and 2000, was when God uh, brought us a model um, through uh, a documentary series called Transformation Videos. And they are uh, document documentaries of people who heard the call of the Lord to pray. And it, sometimes it was like three or four people began getting together to pray and seek God's face for their city, for transformation. Because their city was overrun with crime, with uh, every kind of evil. Sometimes witchcraft itself was the, was the, the biggest um, obstacle that they were facing. Uh, lots of poverty and depravity. And as they prayed and sought God, God came in and transformed their land. As it says in the word that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will come and heal their land. So we're going to watch one of those videos here in just a little bit. But I wanted to kind of paint a picture of where True North Star Ministries, where, where we're getting ready to go in 2016. So many of you know we ran a boys ranch for 12 years of the 18 years that we lived here. Um, and that ministered to boys outside of this community and community families and, and children, uh, young, young people. Um, but God has been transitioning since 2012. God has been transitioning us out of uh, youth into adult uh, transformation. And dad was placed in a jail in August of 2012 to be the chaplain. And God plucked me out of working with youth and families in 2014. And I have been uh, working with guys in transition, uh, in, out of Teen Challenge, and out of the jail system, and been mentoring and coming alongside those that are coming out of uh, addictions. And so we began, God began painting the picture for what it takes to transform a city. Um, there have been faithful people praying, which yes. I want to I represent uh, Roseburg House of Prayer with uh, Dale and Kathy. Lynn, Lynn and Richard are actually in Atlanta right now telling the nations what God is doing in Roseburg. Okay? And so, and we're praying, we're covering them in prayer, and God is doing great and mighty things there. But they've been praying as long as we've been here. And, and we were, God kind of connected us in House of Prayer kind of early on in those early times uh, and, and has, has continued to build that relationship because the focus really was the same. To see our city and our county, our state, our nation transformed. And it has to start with the people who are willing to listen to God, be obedient, and submit and and chase after with a hunger and a thirst that, that cannot be finished without him. Okay. So 2013, God kind of finished the vision um, of what he wanted True North Star Ministries to accomplish. And it had to do with restoration of families. And the way to restore yeah. families is to get the men restored. And so uh, God told us to build a 150-bed recovery facility in Roseburg because Douglas County uh, does not usually let their people uh, leave the county to get treatment. So God said, build it here. And so we began activating our faith and going after and standing for some things, believing for uh, property, for funding, for the vision. This is a massive vision. We didn't know how it was going to happen. But uh, we had some people that helped us along the way to paint the vision and to, to draw the picture. In 2015, just as we were getting ready to launch 
in June of, of this gigantic vision, all of that stuff that we thought we had in our hand to be able to accomplish it went away. And uh, so we no longer had the property to put it on. And, uh, and we were actually uh, displaced from the home and we did not know uh, where we were going to go or how God was going to do this. And so during that season of on our face before the Lord, God said, you're going to actually start with the ending. And so the ending is that we, the goal is for the men as they go through the recovery process to then enter into an internship program that would basically teach them how to duplicate what we do so that they can do it for other men. So that they can set other men free from addictions and set other people free um, from years of pain and bondage. So uh, we began drawing up the plans for that uh, all summer long. Uh, and so we, in 2016, uh, believe what we are going to be launching, uh, which is actually phase two of the vision that God gave about the restoration of men. And so um, we're actually on the 17th of March. Uh, we're going to be having a community meeting that's going to be held at the Ford Room at the library. And um, that's basically going to be the vision cast for our community of what God has put on our hearts. Now, there's a lot of people that have heard the vision, and, and there's a lot of people that are agreeing, yes. This is a good idea. In fact, this is a plan that will work. In fact, there's not really anybody else who's been willing to implement a plan like this anywhere in Oregon. And we definitely see this as something that is uh, could absolutely benefit and transform our community. So with that, um, we're going to be launching. And with the anticipation of putting actually action to it, um, obviously needing property uh, and funding to do so um, is is that's God's department. So we're going to be we're going to be active in our faith and obedience and taking steps towards it, because um, the Bible says uh, to act as if God is. And so we're exercising our faith and we're exercising our muscles and putting things into work that are believing that God is going to do that in 2016. And there are a lot of things that are confirming that word. And so um, we. Basically, this meeting that we wanted to have you guys, you guys have, have been standing with us. Some of you have been standing with us almost all the 18 years that we've been here. Some of you are fairly new to us and have only known us for a few months. But God, we believe, has strategically placed you in our lives because he wants you to be a part of this thing that he's building. It's going to take people. It's going to take resources. And you have the resources and you have Abilities and things that God has placed in you for this city, for transformation of Roseburg. And so we would like to um, to share with you some of the ways that we can see you getting involved with what's going to be coming. And I'm going to have uh, Mom, Christy, go ahead and come share. Is there anything else that I need to catch? I just want to tell you, um, no, you, you covered it perfectly. The phase two is called an intensive aftercare program. That's a name. It even has an acronym. Yeah, acronym. Yeah, I A P. Yeah. Intensive aftercare program. What that is, it's going to have jobs. It's going to help people have homes. So once they graduate out of the treatment center, they have a place to go that's safe living, sober living conditions. They're going to be helped uh, in apprenticeships and jobs. And they're going to be then um, offered a, a mentoring internship. So that's what we're going to start with. The meeting um, is really not our meeting on, on March 17th. Um, Commissioner Chris Boyce is chairing that meeting. And he has sent out letters to key individuals, uh, business owners, uh, people that are uh, major influencers in our community for change. And so that meeting uh, is by invitation only, but we're going to have the same meeting for everybody to come to, and we will give you that invitation, and uh, we will serve you nice hors d'oeuvres too. Okay, um, but that'll be uh, after this first kickoff on March seventeenth. We will show you the entire presentation, and uh, it's very very exciting. 
So there are ways that you can, can minister during this time if you want to be a part of True North Star Ministries. This is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. Um, because what you, what Holy Spirit puts on your heart to do, just do it. Okay? We're not here to micromanage uh, what's going on. But these are some things I'm just going to give uh, Jeremy or somebody. Raise your hand if you're interested in getting um, an opportunity to serve sheet. And then we've got pens and pencils. You can put your name on it and uh, let me know what you are thinking about. There's an opportunities to serve um, sheet. And if you'd like to have one, just raise your hand and let Jeremy know. And he'll bring one to you. And we have pencils. It sounds something like this. We have four, four places right now that you can serve. One is here. We have morning worship here from 8 a.m. until 9-ish, um, Monday through Friday. And uh, so there are things that can be done, uh, things like bake the communion bread. bread. Now, where's Maureen? Maureen has been doing this for us for a fairly long time, and it's somebody else's turn to bake the communion bread. <laughs> but there's vacuuming and set up, and there is um, emptying the trash and making the coffee and that kind of thing. Celebrate recovery. I just want you to know that everything in us, everything about us, is about transformation. And so we are getting transformed. Our entire leadership team is now in Celebrate Recovery. And so, <laughs> yes, we are facilitating the meeting, but we're in recovery. We want you to know that we think that everybody needs to be in recovery. Because recovery is recovery from hurts, hang-ups, and habits. It is not just substance abuse, all right? And so as we grow in the Lord, we, we begin recovering from the things that we didn't know we even had. Because Holy Spirit will just, like, tell you. <laughs> okay, and then you can work on it. So at Celebrate Recovery, we meet on Thursday nights uh, at Church on the Rise, they're letting us use their building. We have tons of things to do. We, we need help setting up. We need help putting coffee together. We need snacks. Um, many of our folks are living in shelters or they are living in um, group homes, and so they really don't have the, the ability to bring food. Snacks are an important part. If you want to bring snacks, that would be an amazing ministry to help. We need help with check-in and um, uh, what we really need is for you all to sign up to be in self recovery, whether you think you need it or not. Because here's, here's the thing. You are, many of you, are more stable and more, um, I'm going to say, mature in the Lord. Our young baby followers of Jesus, they need you. They need someone to look to, to lean on, that you can encourage, and you need to be an encourager. You see, Jesus said, Go and make disciples. Well, you're not a discipler unless you're discipling somebody. It's go and make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. If you're not making any disciples, you're not doing what Jesus asked you to do. Oh! Come on! Come on! Come on. Preach it! <laughs> okay, so we are encouraging you to become uncomfortable and to come yeah. to celebrate your coffee. Celebrate recovery and ask Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to know and change? And then, of course, you can help us tear down and clean up afterwards. <laughs> and then uh, the third way that you can interface with us is we do periodic time over Thomas. And our next one is March 4th and 5th. We condensed it down to a Friday night, Saturday day. And uh, this is a, a seminar of healing. This is how to get past your past to identify some of the core issues that have caused you to behave in ways that are not really serving you now in your adult life. And it's not really helping you walk a, uh, I'm going to say, a fruitful and productive life in Christ. So we've got tons of things that you can help with there. And then the fourth way is uh, to help us prepare for the Community Reinvestment Summit on March 17th. And for these two last two things, we need prayer teams. We need people praying for people and praying for our teams that are teaching because the enemy hates this. He hates it. And so what he does is he likes to come in and just smack things around a bit just to make it, you know, annoying and more difficult. And we're always having to press through during times before and during times after. So prayer covering is ultimately... Um, 
very important. Um, one of the big things that is not on this list is we need people that can help us provide transportation. Many of the individuals that we uh, serve and relate to do not have driver's licenses. And so until the Lord gives us vans, which he's going to, Jesus, thank you, we appreciate that, and we thank you in advance for the vans. We're going to need van drivers. If you have a car that has two empty seats or more, if you're willing to make two trips in a night to go pick people up and bring them to a meeting, bring them to celebrate recovery, bring them to worship in the morning, bring them to, we need people that are willing to help us transport folks that don't have driver's licenses. Christy, just heard tonight that Linda Greco was sharing that the girls are begging to come yeah. to worship from Samaritan Inn. Yeah. And so uh, that van need is huge. Is, is huge. So yes. thank you. Okay, so that. some of the things that would bless the ministry, if you know of someone or you are willing to do a cookie bake sale or something to help us obtain these, uh, we do need a van. We could use a microwave. We could use a vacuum cleaner uh, for the worship center. Um, and there's a few other things uh, that would bless us as well. Did you raise your hand again? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. This is my friend Raina. <laughs> and her husband Ted. Hey, you guys. Under the We Are So Blessed sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, any of you who haven't been to Triumph Over Trauma, um, I just wanted to let you know some of the things that it involves to talk really loud now. Some of the things that it involves to set up Triumph Over Trauma. And a lot of the things that are provided during that time, um, they don't just fall out of the sky. I mean, we would like to, to think they do, but um, Christy in particular and the whole team, they provide a lot of snacks. Um, sometimes the Triumph Over Trauma is not sponsored by a certain church. So in that case, we would provide the meals, uh, snacks, you know, breakfast, that type of thing. Um, there's, she provides snacks on the tables during Triumph Over Trauma, and sometimes that might be a matter of just going to the dollar store and getting a bag of hard candy, you know. Um, another really important thing to know is this Triumph Over Trauma, I'm speaking so much about that because it's really close to my heart. Um, they are gracious enough to give people grants if they cannot afford to pay for going through this workshop. It's only $35, but if you don't have that, no biggie. Right. Um, but if there's a situation where, you know, three quarters of the people who attended, you know, were thrilled to have them, but if they aren't able to pay, then all the things to set up that workshop still have to be paid for. And so I just want to encourage everybody to really um, participate in helping to supply some of those needs and, and just realize it's, it's really hard for me to say, but um, I, the first triumph over trauma I went to was uh, last February and it has completely changed my life. It has completely changed my life. A year ago, I would not have even stood in front of a group of people. And to let you know how how much the enemy had attacked me, is years ago, I was a motivational speaker. And I stood before hundreds of people speaking and teaching in this community. And I had got so far down that it took trying over trauma to give me that part of my life back.
group, and they were sending a team to Coos Bay, and I said to Christy, uh, Mary and I are going, and since you can't come, we'll just believe the Lord that we'll get a prophetic word for our ministry here. Amen. And I, when we walked in, I sat down, and right away, the minister said, you are incredibly significant in worldwide revival. Woo! You are a small spark that sets the forest ablaze. <laughs> the river is getting deeper, especially for inner healing. I'm sure that was the word that Christy and I were believing the Lord for. Yes, it was. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure. I agree. <laughs> Amen. All right, baby, you're on. All right. Come on, stay here. Don't go away. There we go. All right, I'm going to start it. And uh, may have to... Thank you, Lord. Let's do it. Transformation is a potent word, a powerful concept. But what does it mean in relation to a society? Can the spiritual DNA of the community really be altered? If so, what kind of features does this new blueprint produce? In this program, we'll attempt to answer these and other important questions. We'll visit several communities whose streets and institutions have lately been wrapped by the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll examine both the causes and the effects of this most impressive phenomenon. To take us on this journey, we join noted investigative researcher George Otis Jr., a man who spent years reading signposts on the road to community transformation. Community transformation is a concept that many Christians struggle with. But where does this tentativeness come from? My own observation is that it derives largely from the limitations of our own life experience. Do you ask? This is the number one in a series. We're going to share them. Every month we're going to do a movie night and we're going to share one of these testimonies about transformations and sins because we want you to see that it's actually possible. When David and I first saw this first transformation video, it was like in 2000 and we were so undone. We were so undone because we were so, um, we so wanted that here. And we, I attended before the Lord and said, tell somebody in America, tell the pastors, tell, you know, tell somebody. And he's like, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm saying, tell somebody with influence. We're nobody in this town. And we were even less than <laughs> in our little ministry now. And so I was, I was just, and he just kept saying, no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So David said, well, then fine. <laughs> he said, we're going to tell the whole city. And so the very first thing we did was we showed this transformation video at the fairgrounds. And we put a big ad in the paper. And like 270 people came to see that. I mean, 470 people came. <laughs> and so the cool thing is, is that Holy Spirit just will not let us go about this. Roseburg is going to get changed. Yes. Roseburg is going to get changed, okay? Because we have already, our pastors are already like this. Yes. That is an unheard of miracle. Yes. You can't find anybody, any community. I, I bet Roseburg is the only community in the United States that has a collective group of pastors this big that are like this. They love one another, they serve one another, they pray for one another, and they're standing by one another, and now they're ready to act together. So whenever the pastors get together, that means the churches get together. When the churches get together, Jesus Christ has something to work with. Woo! Isn't that cool? There's a whole bunch of these really cool things. The yep. next one that we do next What's month you? is this next testimony. This, this is my favorite one that's coming up next month. So we'll uh, let you know when we're going to have that. It'll be on a Friday night. It'll be a movie night. We probably won't have potluck, but we will have 
uh, popcorn and uh, goodies. Amen. So, I believe that that uh, that God is doing that in Roseburg right now. I truly believe it. I've got to see how much change has happened just in three and a half years that I've got to be at the at the jail and at the courthouse. And uh, and the and the the people that God has brought in. Do you know that we have three believing commissioners right now? How? Yes. And 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 what House of Prayer did with us um, right after the shooting at UCC really brought those three commissioners together. Um, and each of them came at different times to the to the uh, tent and uh, were really ministered to. And it's just a powerful thing to walk down the hall, because I always go back that way to get in my truck, and they'll come and say, David, grab me, come here, you know, <laughs> and uh, to come, and, and they want me to pray over them and to, to talk with them about the things that we're doing. And several of the guys got to meet Chris, uh, Chris Boyce, our commissioner, and now he has shared that with the other two, and they... Uh, Susan Morgan stopped me in the hall the other day and she says, I want to meet those guys. And so, come. Yeah. Come on. Guys. And, uh, amen. And God just did a super thing that, that day. So, it's happening. And uh, as we met, 18 of the pastors were together, which was the large, largest group we've had for several years to pray at the prayer summit. When we came back together on Thursday, there was almost 50 of us together for the luncheon that Thursday. And it was so powerful to see and sense what God is doing right now. So, it's exciting to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Very exciting. And uh, so pray for us uh, about uh, March 17th. Uh, and thank you, Lord for such an incredible place for us to come and gather. Thank you. Jesus! Thank you. It's all him. It's all him. Um, and so we are so grateful that we waited patiently until he, he showed us what to do. Well, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, uh, for this special night that we celebrated with you all that you're doing in our lives, all that you're doing in our community. And God, we, we haven't seen anything yet. Because you really want to blow the doors off in this community. To open up hearts to you and to, to bring them in. To draw people's hearts to you. You are always pursuing this. And I'm so grateful for that. So grateful that you continue to pursue us. To draw our hearts to where you are moving, where you are at work in people's lives. And Lord, we will we are really good listeners but excellent obeyers. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks all.